It's time for Catwoman to find out that someone else is in the cowl. This time we are covering, in order, Catwoman number 6, Batman 503 and 504, and Catwoman number 7. The Catwoman issues are written by Joe Duffy, with pencils by Jim Ballant, inks by Dick Giordano, colors by Buzz Setzer, and lettering by Bob Pinaha. The Batman issues are written by Doug Mensch, with art by Mike Manley, colors by Adrian Roy, and lettering by Ken Brusniak. Both are edited by Jordan B. Gorfinkel and the legendary Denny O'Neill. We open a Catwoman being shown footage of land developers using nerve gas to kill wildlife in advance of a development project. The footage was brought to her by an eco-terrorist group, the Friends of the Earth Nature Magic Alliance. And if that name wasn't cringy enough, the neurotoxin is called Zyklon C, just a couple letters removed from the chemical used in, in the gas chambers in Nazi concentration camps. <sighs> she is also given a gadget by her allies, a collar that amplifies cat voices. From my experiences with my cats, this would probably just freak them the fuck out. Yeah, cats recognize their own voices, but they also don't expect them to be that loud. In any case, the friends have been tipped off to the developers having a conference to discuss their use of the toxin scheduled to be held in Gotham, and the friends want to stop them. They tried linking the meeting to the press, but according to them, the story was killed by a bribe. So, on the other hand, a couple of members of the group want to hit the suits with their own deadly poison and kill them all. Now, the reason they know so much about all of this is the group's scientific advisor, Professor Job Underhill, helped to create the toxin while working for a previous employer. Oh, and speaking of Professor Underhill, on his way to his office to, um, or on the way to the office for the speeding, some people tried to kidnap and or kill him and steal his notes, all under the guise of being muggers, only to be stopped by Asbat. Not brain blaming Asbat for this one with the guy getting his hand broken, because you kind of asked for this when you punched Batman in the obvious armor. Catwoman returns home, changes into the Selena Kyle identity, feeds her cats, and then heads back to the Friends, where she learns that Professor Underhill has been attacked and saved, or attacked by goons, I should say, and has since been saved by the new Batman. While Dr. Hill explains what happens, two of the friends, Doogie and Marv, grab his notes and flee the building. So, with the formula now out in the wild, Catwoman knows where one of the a drum of one of the compounds and components needed to make the compound is, so she breaks into that location and hides it so she can come back later to render it inert, as Asbat looks on. Batman Issue 503 opens where Catwoman number 6 left off. Jean-Paul is somewhat infatuated by Catwoman, which ends up coming across as more creepy than, say, Bruce and Selena's relationship due to the tone of Jean-Paul's internal monologues. That night, Gordon sends up the bat signal, and Asbat and the commissioner discuss the recent threats on the conference. Gordon brings up the threat of the Zyklon C, and Asbat brings up they saw the theft and draws the conclusion that Catwoman is planning a terrorist attack with the neurotoxin. Catwoman, Gordon calls that out to the fact that this isn't her style, this isn't how she rolls, but Asbat has convinced himself of this, and so that's, that's the path he's going to take. Just after Asbat leaves, Gordon is informed by Bullock that Mayor Kroll wants to meet with them. At the meeting, we just get a reiteration of Mayor Kroll's new law enforcement platform that goes past tough on crime to all to his to his view being that all cops should be bastards. Back in the Batcave, Jean Paul reads up in the files of Catwoman, as elsewhere in Gotham, Catwoman prepares to steal some other chemicals. As part of this little sequence, we see that Jean-Paul has bricked up the entrance to the cave from Wayne Manor. I didn't talk about this in Catwoman's issue, but we need to talk about this now. Catwoman's 90s costume here. It's bad. She is effectively completely naked. No drawn bust support, no indicator of fabric 
movement underneath portions of the body, nothing on the costume to establish where she's keeping the stuff she's stealing or the tools she's using to steal it with. Now, some of her costumes were great either. Her original costume had like a really big dress that actually significantly would limit her range of motion, but this is so much worse. Of all the people in the 90s to get pouches, why not Catwoman? And again, to put this in perspective, this is the period where you had Jim Lee and his successors, uh, 90s X-Men, wearing skin-tight jumpsuits as well, but they felt like clothing as opposed to the artist drawing a nude figure without certain anatom with certain anatomical details removed and then putting a, co a different coloring on it and saying it's a costume. In any case, Catwoman and Asbat encounter each other in a chemical plant where Catwoman tries to explain her plan to use the chemical of benzotriline to render the Zyklon C inert. And as part of this scene, Catwoman almost immediately realizes that no, Asbat isn't Bruce. This leads to a fight with Catwoman escaping with the benzotriline with Batman in, or say Asbat in pursuit. Batman 504 opens as Asbat is tormented once again by a vision of St. Dumas before he resumes his pursuit of Catwoman, following her to a boat where they fight on the speeding vehicle before they both have to vacate the vehicle before it crashes into a pier. As Asbat continues the chase, Bullock, Montoya, and Gordon all end up following at ground level. Eventually, they all meet in artist studio after Batwoman, Bat Batman and Catwoman's fight, I should say, knocks a gargoyle out of a window, caving in the roof of an empty parked car. In Soviet artist workshop, gargoyle perch on you! The issue ends with GCPD having Catwoman at gunpoint with the benzo triline on the floor next to her as Batman swings off. We conclude the storyline with Catwoman number seven and Selina Kyle is not happy with this state of affairs as, as Bat gloats. You couldn't believe Catwoman was involved in the nerve, nerve gas theft, Commissioner Gordon. You needed proof. And there's the evidence, right at your feet. Use the evidence to remove her from the night, for good. Batman, the Dark Knight, protector of Gotham City. I could kill him! Batman recently changed his costume and style, but there's something more. He's not my dear old enemy at all, because the man in the armor is just an undersexed, sanctimonious dolt who just threw me to the law for something I didn't even do. This proceeds to a quick recap of how the story started before Catwoman uses the amplification collar for a diversion so she can escape. Elsewhere, Doogie and Marv have the, Marv have the bright idea to force Underhill to try and make a whole new batch of toxin. So, just outside the conference, Underhill is about to go to the building to argue why the poison shouldn't be used, only for Doogie and Marv to roll up and kidnap him. At GCPD, Catwoman uses the bat signal to call Batman, where she once again lays everything out and he finally agrees to team up. At the local high school, Doogie and Marv have forced Underhill to, they think, make them a new batch. Doogie goes to poison the conference while Marv prepares to kill Underhill, only for Catwoman and Asbat to interfere. I'm just going to say here, if your response to facing off against Batman is these words, not again, you have made poor life choices. Batman takes down Marv as Catwoman checks on Underhill, where she learns the truth of what's been of what he's done, and she clears out, leaving Underhill to pass the information on to Asbat. The truth is, Underhill whipped up a batch of tear gas instead because Doogie and Marv are too dumb to know what he's doing. No, and so Doogie successfully vents that into the conference before being arrested. The issue ends with Catwoman taunting the suits while dangling from a rope ladder beneath the helicopter, a la Carmen Sandiego or Lupin III, while Asbat ends up shaking his fist at her like Inspector Zenigata. This story is fun. Honestly, like the thing that harms the storyline for me is, well, the 90s Catwoman costume. Like, it's, in a weird way, skimpier than the costume that Michelle Pfeiffer wore in the Tim Burton 
um, movie in Batman Returns. Like if she had the costume that Darwin Cook drew for her, which kept the cat suit concept of basically a sort of form fitting, or not form fitting, but um, close to the form jumpsuit, dark colored, that and all that sort of thing. He, if you look at his pictures of it, it gives enough fabric movement and folds to it, and that sort of thing, that you can imagine that she's actually got some sort of po some pockets secreted into it, in the sleeves, in the legs, um, along the side of the body, that sort of thing, to, you know, tuck some lock picks or um, a place to slip some jewels that she's stolen in, that sort of thing, while still being kind of sexy, helped by the fact that Honestly, Darwin Cook's the guy who introduced the Catwoman um, zip up the front uh, to the catsuit design. Whereas this, I can't tell how she takes it on and puts it off. Otherwise, like, this story is great. Joe Duffy is one of my favorite comic writers of this period. Um, I l deeply loved her Star Wars run. And if you watch Legend of the Forest, you remember I, I heaped a whole lot of sugar on that. So... Like reading this definitely goes, I need to take the time and sit down and read her Catwoman run. I need some in the future. I shall get around to that. Next time though, we're going to go back and see what Robin's been up to since his first little outing of flying solo. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please like and subscribe, and also consider backing my Patreon. Patreon backers get episodes up to one week early of this show and any future Let's Plays. Also, please consider backing my coffee. Uh, toss me a few bucks, also helps support the show, and it's not a monthly obligation or anything like that.